Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to be painting some flowers using watercolours and the paper that I'm going to be working on is an SAA practice paper. I will link this paper down below in the description. This is one I use quite often when I'm doing workshops or tutorials and demonstrations. It's a really handy paper to have so it's £140 in weight and it's a good practice watercolour paper so I will link that down below. For those of you that don't, don't know the SAA is the Society of All Artists. So the flowers that I've chosen to do today are some spring flowers. For the last few weeks I've had quite a bit of time off. Of course we've had Christmas and we've had New Year and prior to that I was busy doing some renovations on the house which actually aren't quite finished but that's another story. And I think you get a little bit rusty when you're not doing things every day and a good way to sort of get yourself back into your drawing um, and get your eye back in is to do some quite illustrative work and stick to some simple shapes and just enjoy the painting process afterwards of filling in and blocking in the colours. So I have a, my printer isn't working brilliantly today, it doesn't like the cold and I think it was frozen in the studio overnight, we've been down to about minus four every night for the last few nights. Um, so these aren't the greatest quality prints that I've printed off but I will link these photographs, they're all from Pixabay I'm going to do this using spring flowers you can use any combination of flowers that you want any photographs that you've got of simple flower shapes that's absolutely fine it is nice to have ones that would perhaps be all flowering at the same time but of course it's art and you're making a picture you're making an image so it doesn't matter if the things that um, aren't necessarily going to be flowering together whatever whatever's best for you and you don't have to do them the colors that they are of course as well the, the real thing that we wanted to concentrate on today was just drawing some basic shapes shapes to get our hand and our eye back into drawing after Christmas and starting the new year um, and getting going again with our drawing and painting. So I've got tulips, I've got some crocus and I've got a daffodil there and I think that's some meiosis or something like that. So picked very simple shapes. And the thing about flowers is, um, I, mean, I love flowers, I love gardening, but the, the thing with them is you're, you're getting contrast in your picture without really trying because we've got the lovely soft curvy lines of the petals and round shapes and then we've got these very determined straight shapes of the stem so without even really having to think about it already in your image you're going to have a lot of contrast in your line some curves and some nice straight um, very directional lines if we look at these very sharp lines of the crocus leaves compared to the lovely flowing lines of the petal all of that's going to make an interesting picture so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the pencil and do some very simple shapes and get those petals and things in um, and then I'll move on to doing it the outline in a, a pen which is obviously um, a waterproof pen and then I'll go over it and fill in the colours with some watercolours. So by that stage it just becomes quite relaxing because you've got the solid drawing down and then you can just sit and relax and spend a couple of hours where your mind goes away from everything else just putting those colours in of the watercolour and you can block them in single colours quite solidly or you can just blend the colours together you do using a wet in wet te technique so it really depends on, on your own style there but that becomes really quite absorbing and enjoyable because you've got that solid drawing down so to begin with I'm going to start perhaps with this shape of the Narcissus actually that's a nice one to start with and I'm going to do flowers all over the page um, you can see I've taped the um, paper down to the board there to begin with and when I peel that off that's going to give us a nice margin but I'm going to just higgledy piggledy put flowers all over the page so it's not going to look like they're growing in a garden or anything it's going to be more like a wallpaper pattern or any kind of higgledy piggledy pattern just to make something vibrant and colourful um, do the flowers in different sizes so some of them are more of a focal big flower and then you've got some smaller ones that could be in the background and then in between those I'm going to put some leaf shapes and some straight lines and some pattern um, just to bring the whole thing together and some of that could be quite abstract uh, and impressionistic it doesn't have to be ultra realistic so I'll go ahead and do the drawing now and for those of you that haven't seen me drawing flowers before I've got plenty of other videos that you might want to look back on so with something like this I would start by you could have a circle there and then fill the petals into that so I'll do that one first before I speed up the camera um, and show you the drawing process. So I do apologise for the noise of the heater down here by me. Um, 
like I say, it's very cold in here. I've actually got my bobble hat on as I'm drawing this. So, a nice big circle. So I set off with a nice big flower and it's kind of off centre, but don't worry too much about the composition. This is a practice and this is a warm up to get our eye back into drawing and just having a bit of fun with some of these shapes. So if I'm looking at this, it's got six petals, so quite evenly spaced along. Um, so I've just done that outer shape of the circle and then pop the, the inner, inner circle in there and then think about where the stem's going. So very, very, keep it very simple. Don't overthink this. Don't have it absolutely worrying about every placement of each petal. And they might want to come over the line a little bit. And they're not all going to be exactly the same size because nature's quite random. And you can spend as long as the, on this as you want or do it quite quickly. Whichever way is best for you to work. And like I say, then you can enjoy putting those colours on afterwards. And this is a white narcissus, but you might want to make it yellow, you might want to change it, you might want to make it purple, it doesn't really matter. That, that uh, petal there wants to be a little bit narrow I think. Just move that line across. Let's move this one a bit further this way. Okay, So you don't really need to even follow the the picture that you've got in front of you absolutely perfectly. You can just alter things a little bit. And I think that stem's far too fat for... Let's just narrow that down a bit. So like I said, I'm rusty as well. I've not done anything for a few weeks. So it's just getting your eye back in. Um, and I love this because we've got that lovely red rim around and then you've got all these little ends here of where the pollen is collected there okay and so then once you've got your shape in you can get rid of your guidelines just make sure you've got a nice clean rubber I cleaned this rubber off before I started because it's one that I was using for charcoal the other day I do try and keep two separate rubbers but occasionally I get them muddled up so give them a nice clean off on a bit of rough paper Okay, so that's one to start off with and then I'm just going to carry on with the pencil, get lots and lots of flowers, higgledy piggledy, put some abstract shapes in between and then I will go over the whole thing with um, a nice pen. Okay, so I think that's probably enough flowers. You might want to put more in, you might want to put some smaller ones in, you might want to make it a lot busier. Again, that's all very much personal preference. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. So the pen that I'm going to be going over that with is a size 0.5 and that's a Unipin fine liner and this one is a black one. Um, so waterproof and fade proof. So it's important that you use fade proof pens, um, archival pens, so that your work isn't going to you know, fade over time. So I'm going to go over this now with a pen, the lines that I've already done with the pencil, but I make them much neater and tidier. Um, you know, you're sort of sketching with your pencil and then you want to make it a little bit 
tidier and more illustrative with the pen to make those nice crisp lines and then once I've done that I might put some extra bits in I might put some pattern in um, that we can block afterwards you'll see that I've left the top open I did say I was going to cover the whole thing um, and make it not like they were growing but once I had that one in it, it sort of felt natural to make this kind of shape with the composition so just do it how you want as you go along you might want to fill the whole thing in but I'm just going to leave that space it's nice to have space in your paintings anyway okay so I'll go ahead now and fill the whole thing in with the pen once I've done that I will leave the pen just to dry for a few moments before I start erasing the lines because although it's fade proof and waterproof it does take a few seconds a few minutes to dry properly so you just don't want to go in with your eraser straight away because it will smudge if you do it immediately after you've painted it after you've drawn it sorry so make sure you just give it a few seconds to to dry nicely and if you're not sure you can just pop the hairdryer over it or something before you use your eraser but the, you know don't be in a rush because you will end up with a smudge You can see how that looks so much neater now that we've got rid of that those pencil lines and you would have noticed there at the end that I put lots of sort of random lines in but they aren't random really they are joining and making enclosed spaces so none of these lines that I've put in are going across any of the petals or leaves you want to make sure you don't do that don't start messing up your flower drawings that you've got so these are behind these lines that I've put in are behind they're not going across um, some of them are curved or some of them are completely straight but what it does is gives you some nice little enclosed spaces to colour in because that's what we want to do now is to make ourselves a brew uh, a cup of tea or coffee sit back and really enjoy just colouring the whole thing in and it could be with watercolours or it could be with anything that you've got to hand um, but the thing about this is you become really absorbed in putting those colours down um, and going between those lines and you forget about everything else that might be on your mind for the time being and it could take a little while to do this we've got lots of space to fill in and you can mix your colours within those spaces don't feel you have to just block them in I perhaps will but um, 
we'll see how it goes so just making sure I get all that pencil off there okay and there's another little bit there so that's what I'm going to do now is mix some watercolours up you could use them straight from the pan if you want it to be really vivid and bright use some nice bright colours and don't put too much water in or you can make it much more dreamy and use more water so it's entirely up to you um, and of course you can change the colours because these were just white it might be nice to make them a, bit, a little bit brighter and have a think about what we're putting up here they do actually look now like these could be hills so we could make those in the in greens or we could go, just go completely technicolor and psychedelic but the main thing is that you've made a very solid drawing that you can fill in all these little enclosed spaces whichever colors come to hand just when you start doing it though the main thing I like to do when I'm doing something like this is not have the same color sitting next to each other so think about what you, what colour you're putting in here. Um, as you're painting this, you want this and this to be a different colour to that as they're sat next to each other and try to have a, you know some contrast going on there. So just have a little bit of a think about where you're placing your colours. But apart from that, you can really just relax. So I'll go ahead now and put some colour on here and I'll put a little bit of music to that. And I'll be back again soon with another video. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of this one. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and if there's any questions at all about anything I've done or anything you would like me to do in the future please um, do put that in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible I'm going to be using my Sennelier travel set to do this because they're nice bright colours like I say use whatever you've got to hand thanks for watching and bye for now
us.